you know, just still after watching the tape, um, you know, your initial reaction after the game, obviously, was all the excitement and everything going on. Um, just really proud of our football team. You know, you get back here and, and get a chance to really sit down and break down the tape. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the amount of grit and determination that our that our team showed the other night was, you know, just kind of inspiring, I think, just overcoming a lot of things early and then finding a way to, to fight your way back into it and, and get a big win on the road at, at a tough place. Um, so can't, can't say enough about the way they've stuck together, the way they continue to, to grind. And, you know, as you look at the tape now, uh, knowing we could have played a, a lot better and can continue to improve in so many areas. Um, again, it's just game two. Uh, we still got a lot, a lot of football left. Uh, some things, obviously, that we can take from that game and build upon. Um, but tremendously proud of them from that standpoint. Now, we've got a really, really difficult test in front of us with Cincinnati. I mean, the, again, the number 11 team for the third, third game in a row. Um, very talented, very sound on, in all three phases. Got a lot of weapons on offense. Defensively, they've changed up some things, uh, but um, you know, still playing very aggressively and uh, they just – they make you earn yards. So uh, it's going to be a, a tremendous test for us, uh, but excited to, to get back on the field and, and get an opportunity to compete and glad to, you know, finally get a chance to play at home. I mean, it's October, so <laughs> uh, it's going to be nice to be able to play at home, homecoming, all the festivities going on. So uh, it should be a really good weekend. Philip, are you able to look at the big picture at all and, and kind of, um, you know, I know you've talked a lot about being close, you know, in the last few years and, you know, when you have a win like that, when you didn't necessarily play your best, do you feel like that kind of validates, um, you know, how you felt over the last few years um, about this program being on the right track? Yeah, I do. You know, obviously we still got, that's just one game and, and we've got to, to, to do a lot more work and, and continue to get better, but you know, I think there's some things, obviously, you can take from that game to build on and uh, to remain and, and gain confidence. Uh, try to use the momentum. Obviously, I wish we were playing this week uh, to try to build off the momentum of, of the win, but um, still gives us an opportunity to continue to get healthy and continue to, to improve in, in a lot of areas. But, um, you know, last year I talked a lot about it. We're, we're a really good football play team playing a, a really tough schedule, and we had opportunities that – Obviously, we could have converted, but um, I feel the same way about this team. I mean, uh, we, we've still got a lot of talent on it. We got guys that um, are continuing to get better each and every day, and I think we're just now starting. Again, it's game two, so we're just now kind of trying to find ourselves and gel and, and continue to get better. Philip, uh, when you look at the last two games against UCF, the, the thing that stands out to me is your, your defensive front play, whether it's getting to the quarterback, you had six sacks last year, 10 tackles for loss this year, and, and stopping the run. If you were to point to any one thing as to why you guys seem to have success against UCF, would, would that be it? Would it be the way your defensive front plays? Yeah, I mean, I, our front seven, and, and you know, we're, we're, a, we're a different style of defense, but those guys have done a tremendous job up front. Um, they do a good job of, of, of attacking each play. You know against them, they're going to be very, very explosive. you got to try to uh, at least limit some of that uh, explosive play dynamic that they bring. But it, it still starts a lot with the run with them. And, you know, they're, they're always able to just, whenever they want to, hand the football off and go get five or six yards and, and have explosive runs too. And I thought – uh, Coach Gillespie and our defensive staff did a really good job from a schematic standpoint. And then our players obviously deserve all the credit. They're the ones that are going out and executing at a high level. I think our guys did a really good job in both of those games of, of when they got to the football, they were sure tacklers. And when you end up in those situations where you have one-on-one -on -one tackles, uh, we're still making those. So 
uh, we're able to do some things because of our corners playing very aggressively and, and trying to knock some of the timing off of it. But uh, it's an overall deal, not just the front. I think it's an overall deal with our defense, and they do a good job of, of playing off of each other. Hey, Coach, you, you mentioned a little bit uh, in one of the other answers, but this is not – you don't feel like this is a great time for a, for a bye week for you guys, do you? Well, I'd like to be able to play off the momentum of the win for sure. You know, um, you know that, that was a big one. Um, obviously, you got another big one staring you right in the face, and you would like to continue to kind of keep that mojo that, that you kind of got from the, from the last one. But – you know, this has kind of been our year, though, right? I mean, when you think about even fall camp, we, we get four days of practice in, and then we have a halt, and then we practice a little bit more and have a halt. And then, you know, we don't play the first game. And then with Oklahoma State, you know, we have another week that, that it kind of had to have some more time. And so this has kind of been our scenario all year long. So, you know, I think our guys will continue to – build and continue to get better and as we watch this tape and, and they sit down and see it they're going to see a lot of good things but they're also going to see a lot of things that we can get a lot better at and continue and improve as a team you look at that schedule and, and you mentioned this a second ago but it's always the 11th ranked team in the country every, every time you look at it you get kind of tired of seeing that number 11 up there you know we're attacking each week as its own right and so um we understand whether the rankings there or not, how strong our conference really is uh, from top to bottom. And every week is going to be a battle. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're ranked or not ranked. And, and we know how talented our league is. And so, um, you know, I, maybe it just adds a little bit more significance to it when you got a number sitting out in front of their name. So uh, it, it's nice to know that you know, the level of competition continues to rise in our conference and, and we're rising with it. Coach, kind of going off of that, I mean, talk about facing tests this year. You missed nine days in camp and then you get the number 11 team three games in a row. Can you kind of talk about how this is really showing what this team is made of and, and really what they can do, especially early in the season? Yeah, you know, we, we've, we've faced a lot of obstacles up to this point, but our team has done a good job of staying together. Our team has done a good job of focusing on what we can control because uh, there's a lot of things out of our control. And, you know, for us, it's it's really trying to keep that mindset of every day we get an opportunity to get on the field, we need to take advantage of it. We need to get better. Uh, we've got some days in front of us right here that we've got to do the same thing. And, and that's how we're going to continue uh, to develop into the type of team that I know that we can be. And, you know, I think our mindset has been that way uh, throughout the course of this really – uh, kind of trying year, if you will. Are you guys having to approach bye weeks differently this year? Is it, are you guys keeping it pretty much the same or with COVID? Are you guys having to do things a lot differently and trying to limit contact or whatever it may be? Yeah, it's a little bit different, TJ. I mean, it's because, you know, honestly, we've, we're kind of going back to the same schedule that we kind of been on for the last three weeks, you know, because we were planning on playing Oklahoma State, then that got bumped. So, you know, it changed our practice schedule and we were able to kind of get a couple of practices that way. And then obviously the Arkansas State game gets canceled. And so that throws us for a loop and we kind of went on that that schedule. And so what we've kind of done this week is kind of kind of take that same approach. So, you know, Sunday we really – we didn't get in until – you know, almost 5 a.m. And so we kind of gave them Sunday as far as they came up, got treatment, and that was it. Normally we'd be up lifting and, and getting film work and, and those things in. We kind of gave them Sunday as a, as a day and to, to kind of rest and recoup. Monday's always been our day off. And then, you know, today obviously we're going to do some things. And, and so we'll work a little bit more through the weekend than what we have in the past. Normally we'd be, you know, working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'd get them up and, and lift and go to class and do those things and kind of cut them loose over the weekend, bring them back on Sunday where we'll work a little bit more through the weekend now. Well, uh, your, your defense is, it's only two games in, but you guys have forced a lot of negative yardage plays on defense. Last year you were near the bottom of the country and that is, is that something more than just the stats that you're seeing on the film in terms of guys getting in position to create negative plays? 
Yeah, I think we're being aggressive on defense, but I also think we're, we're finally in year three of this defense and, and learning more about ourselves. We got guys with experience. They've been playing in this defense now for a little bit longer and figuring out opportunities to, to really uh, be aggressive and attack. And, and again, I think a lot of that just goes back to uh, really doing a good job of tackling. And um, our guys have, have really swarmed the football and, and we've created some some pressures and opportunities uh, to get those tackled for losses and, and being aggressive. How was the locker room on Saturday night? <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was an exciting locker room, obviously, with, uh, with just the way the the game kind of transpired, you know, uh, kind of dug ourselves a hole and then we fought our way all the way back and, and, and being able to finish it like we did. And, um, you know, the guys understood what they had accomplished at that point from the stands of we've been talking since January about really attacking the finish. And we've been close in a lot of games and, you know, uh, it was good to be on the road and, and to come back like that. And so that locker room, it was, it was exciting. It was lit. It was, there's a lot of people having fun. We were jumping around and, and um, you know, those guys need to feel that. And that's a huge part of what we're talking about when it comes to momentum and confidence and being able to do those things, especially when you're on the road and, and your backs against the wall and being able to come out and really play the way we did, because it was a, it was a three-phase win for us. I mean, every every phase contributed, whether you're talking defensively, offensively, and special teams. It took all three phases to get it done. And so uh, that's what we've been kind of preaching. That's what we've been talking a lot since, like I said, January, about really um, what we have to do to get over that hump. And, and that's that was a good, good put on, point of emphasis the other night. You guys have had kind of so many issues with, with field goals and, and late in the game, the kicking game, and had some issues Saturday night. But but how did it feel when that last field goal with a minute and a half left kind of gave you guys that cushion and it went through? Yeah, I mean, it was – obviously, we you know, we got the ball back with, I think, about five minutes and 35 seconds left and we're talking to the offense about, you know, really up front, you guys controlling it. We need to just drain this clock off of it and, and finish with points and and – you know, they did a really good job of working the clock, but for Zach to come in and, and hit a big one right there, it just um, – that was, that was huge in the course of the game and, and especially in the minds of all of our players. And to see him walk out there with confidence and knock it down, uh, just uh, – it, it, it was a big deal. I don't, I don't really know how to put it into words, but uh, it was great to see him do that and, you know, for him to continue to build confidence too because – I mean, you know how it is, especially with everybody, but especially with kickers, and, and it's NFL all the way down. So uh, to see him walk out there and, and knock it down was was a tremendous feat. Coach, you've seen Zayvon Collins be a very good player for two years. This year it seems like he's raised the level even further. You know, player of the week uh, this week on the defensive side in the league. Um what are you seeing in his play? And, uh, you know, I mean, he's got to be one of the best linebackers in the country at this point, you have to believe. Yeah, I mean, we had we had a couple of guys that, that got mentioned this week, and, and that's awesome. I mean, uh, it's great to be recognized. I think the one that our guys will be the most proud of is the one that we got mentioned as a team. And, you know, with Zayvon specifically, I mean, when you look at his play, you got to remember he's only been playing linebacker for three years. You know, he, he was a quarterback in a free safety in high school. And so I think he has just got a better understanding of how to play this position. He's got a great understanding of what we're doing defensively. And, uh, and it's allowing him to just be able to trigger and react a whole lot faster instead of sitting back saying, oh, you know, I, I see it. Is that really what I need to be doing now? He's playing at a level where he can be a whole lot more aggressive in, in, in his style of play.